Hi, and welcome to an exciting episode of Portex Tech Lightning. In this episode, we will talk about trust. More specifically, we will dive into the concept of Zero Trust ZT, which is also referred to as Zero Trust Architecture, ZTA. We will have a look at what it is, where it comes from, and some of the practical examples on how to apply this specifically in Azure. So, what exactly is Zero Trust? Conventional network security has always been focused on the perimeter defenses. In other words, a lot of investments have been made to keep the internal network shielded from the outside. If a device, end user or application was inside the shield, it usually meant that they had broad access to the internal network resources. That's where many malicious actors could then gain access to the internal systems. Due to the growth of cloud, usage of personal devices and IoT, organizations are now rethinking this strategy. No longer should the focus be the shield around the network, but any device that are in the network should be subject to validation. This concept can be explained as never trust, always verify. Devices should not be trusted by default, even if they are connected to the managed corporate network, such as the corporate LAN, and even if they were previously verified. Where does this all come from? Well, on the top, we have the US Department of Commerce, which main purpose, amongst other things, are job creation, fostering economic growth, and innovation by setting standards. The National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, it was actually founded in 1901 and is now part of the US Department of Commerce. At the time, their industry competitiveness was behind those of their economic rivals such as United Kingdom and Germany. This is why actually NIST was established, to ensure that the US could compete. Their mission is to promote US innovation and industrial competitiveness by improving upon science, standards and technology. The National Cybersecurity Center of Excellence NCCOE is part of the NIST and leading the development of the Zero Trust architecture. What is Microsoft doing and how does this all fit together in Azure? Well, obviously this is a major topic for Microsoft as they need to show and convince organizations and agencies that their resources are protected in the cloud. They have translated this Zero Trust architecture into the services which they offer. Along with this, there's also an entire Zero Trust Guidance Center. It's a site which is published by Microsoft. This is where they explain the principle of never trust, always verify, and they do this through a set of building blocks. You have identity, endpoints, data, apps, infrastructure, and network. There are three guiding principles in all of this. Verify explicitly which means to always authenticate and authorize even if you are in a trusted network. Use least privilege access, so to limit access to the time frame is required and no more privileges than necessary. This is done with just-in-time access, GIT, and just enough access, GEA. Assume breach, so continuously verify that all the necessary security controls are in place and being used. Use analytics to see what's going on and use all of this data to improve the protection. Now, this is all high level and nice to talk about, but how do we implement this in practice? Let's have a look at some of the key points we can use in Azure. For identity, we can, for example, use single sign-on, SSO, which prevents users from leaving copies of their credentials in various apps. We can use strong authentication, Use Azure ID multi-factor authentication, MFA. Also, we should disable legacy authentication. Uh, legacy authentication is also known as basic authentication, which is a method for collecting usernames and passwords. Examples are Microsoft Office 2013 and older, apps using uh, protocols such as POP, IMAP, and SMTP authentication. For endpoints, we can, for example, do 
this an endpoint you can see it is an any device connected to the network and this is can be challenging because any organization they can have bring your own devices which they have no control over so in big lines all devices endpoints need to be registered in for example azure active directory should enable strong security sex settings with microsoft intune and azure ad such as pin requirements on those devices you enable a compliance policy so that only devices who meet your security requirements are able to access. In the end, you should end up with a single pane of glass, for example, Microsoft Endpoint Protection Manager, to manage everything and to have a SIM to route the device logs to. For data, we can ensure that it's always encrypted, both in REST and in transit. We should use tools such as Azure Information Protection AIP to scan and automatically classify protected files. Also, data loss prevention DLP policies should be put in place. They are there to identify that data is not accidentally leaked to the outside. For example, a human resource employee by accident attaches the wrong file to an email containing personal data. This employee hits the send button in Outlook. Now, before the email is actually sent, the DLP policies identify a breach and prevents the email from being sent. For applications, this is of course very dependent on what type of application and what type of data it's being processing. One tool we have at our disposal is Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps. The intention of this tool is to bring visibility and analytics to combat threats susceptible to your applications. Applications need to be re reviewed on a security level to ensure they are using least privilege access. For the infrastructure, there are some things we can do there. We can, for example, start by setting a security baseline on what is allowed or not allowed in your infrastructure. Some example, any access must be controlled by authentication or authorization. Data must be encrypted, both in transit and in REST. You should restrict traffic flows. Anti-malware must exist and should be up to date. Any workload that exhibits abnormal behavior will then generate an alert. Workloads uh, should require, for example, just-in-time access, GIT. For networking, we can put each and every application in a separate VNet and then connect them to a hub and spoke model. So in practice, you would then create a separate VNet for each application. You would have a hub VNet and an Azure Firewall, with which it communicates with. Put the application components in different VNets. So if you have a VNet with an application, look into splitting up the components into subnets protected with network security groups. Example, web servers in the subnet should be in a different subnet than the backend database. Enable Azure DDoS protection standards on the hub VNet to protect from volumetric network layer attacks. There's an IFTI evaluation tool from Microsoft where you can evaluate your zero trust security posture. If we visit the tool, we will see some areas that we have talked about that we should be able to identify. We have identities, endpoints, apps, infrastructure, data and network. If we evaluate your endpoints, you will see it starts with a whole range of questions for you to fill in. At the end of these questions, you will get a recommendation as how well you're doing with regards to the zero trust principles. As you now understand the whole concept around zero trust, it's very broad and require careful consideration. So I highly recommend to visit the Microsoft website on the zero trust guidance if you need to dig deeper into this topic. The link is in the description of this video. I want to wish you good luck and remember to always trust and watch Portex Tech Lightning. See you.